could see from that intro, this is an entirely standalone test en uh, engine testing stand. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to make one of these. It's really simple, just need a good old dead MTD and a couple of odds and ends here and there. Some of the wiring harness out of the dead MTD. In this case, I did most of mine pretty much with new equipment, but that's because I test engines a lot, and so I wanted to make sure it was all good and ready to go. But, here's the basic idea. Let's get started on it. Like I said, first, you need a dead MTD. We've got this Service Star MTD. You can usually pick these up cheap at the junkyards, because a lot of people ditch them once the very drive starts having some issues. So we've got a nice cheap chassis to work with here. We're going to be making a universal engine stand, usually for Briggs and most Tecumseh engines. Most, your Kawasaki's on like the John Deere's and stuff should fit on this platform also, but we'll have to play with that later. Um, so we're going to be gutting everything out of this and converting it into an engine stand. Unfortunately, I don't have the original front tires, so we're going to have to rig something up there. But so as you can see, we've got the whole hood assembly off of the tractor. We cut it off flat so that if we need to, we could weld it onto the front of another machine. Maybe one with a smashed out front end like main mud mower. And over here, we found some regular push mower wheels. And we put a spacer on, cut out by my buddy Scott, along with the pin where it normally goes so that we can be able to roll the chassis around. What we'll end up doing now is we'll end up setting this to center and then we'll weld everything solid on the knuckle so that this won't turn and that way the whole entire assembly will be able to put a set of handles coming up and a little bump stop on the bottom and the whole assembly will be able to lift up and then roll around wherever it is we need it. Johnny! Johnny! What do you think of MTDs? Good boy. So if you've never torn apart one of these MTDs all the way down to the frame, we'd like to point out to you that the whole engine mount piece is actually separate from the rest of the actual rear frame. So there's actually only about two bolts that are holding this front piece to the rear piece of frame. So now that we've gotten it separated, we can pull this rod out, which is what holds the side foot pans on, along with holding these pieces together. And we'll have this front piece in order to make our engine stand out of. So what we ended up figuring out was that if the axle was mounted in its front plate, out in front of the tractor, that unfortunately, if you put an engine with a newer exhaust on it, it would end up hitting the front axle assembly. So what we've done is we've taken the axle out of its assembly and we're going to weld it on the inside there, the inside there. And as you notice, there's no tie rod end connecting. And that's because we've welded the spindles solid so that they're not going to move. And so we don't need that in the way of the drop down for the pulley. So we're going to get that welded up, test fit an engine in it, and then go from there. There we go, bolt holes line up. So the exhaust has plenty of room now in the front, even on this MTD chassis that was not designed for this kind of thing. As you can see, it's all welded up solid, not gonna go anywhere. So now we just need to figure out a wiring harness for being able to do these on the fly. We'll go from there. So at this point in the build, you're gonna need some supplies in order to set up your testing stand. You're going to need a standard solenoid, you can use either a three prong or a four prong. If you need info on how to hook this up or testing these, I'll include a video for this in the description. Fuel filter, I forgot to buy a shutoff valve for the bottom of the tank. I'll need to install one later. So you need to pick one of those up along with your fuel filter. I would recommend buying the alligator clips that have the shrouds on them because what you're going to be able to do later is cut one side of the clip off so that you can clip the black wire on your kill for the coil and that way the shroud will keep it from grounding out. 
random connectors for hooking up the terminals for your solenoid, different types of toggle switches in order to make your kill switch. These little plastic switches will usually work fine. I prefer to spend the extra $3 and go with an actual metal switch. And your push button for your start. This is a higher end $10 switch. These are just the little $2.50 cheapies. These will work perfectly fine also. And last but not least, you're going to need a universal throttle kit. Um, if you buy, if you spend the extra money, you can get a throttle kit that comes with the slide piece, the mount bracket in case you need it to click in on certain locations, or the regular palm throttle for the older like tillers and things like that. These are the kits that I recommend because you spend $4 or $5 extra and you've got all kinds of different choices for connection no matter what the project is. So from here, we're going to start doing up the wiring. Um, we're just going to wire this the same way as the off-road mowers universal wiring harness is done. So if you need more info on how to wire this, I'm going to include the in the description the video for the off-road Craftsman's wiring harness. <clears throat> so we're going to get this wired up, then we'll do a rundown on the whole setup, and hopefully we'll fire an engine later. Alright, so as you can see, the entire setup is all done. So let's walk through the basic stuff. Here we've got our throttle control. And unfortunately, this one was actually originally meant for a regular push mower, so the controls are backwards. So fast is slow and slow is fast and stop is choke. But that's nothing a permanent marker can't fix. Push button. Kill switch. And because of the way kill switches wire, the off is on and on is off. Yet again, permanent marker, I'll just write it in right there. Gas tank was just taken off of an old rear engine rider. And it's set really high in comparison to where the engine sits. And that was done for a reason. I wanted it as high as I could so that in the case of an engine like this where the fuel pump fails, I'm still able to run the engine on it. So that's why it's as high as it is because I wanted it to be able to gravity feed when necessary. So you got down here, have our battery. This actually came out of a Craftsman LT1000, and that's just on there with a coat hanger tying it to the back. Now, I didn't make an actual all-out tray, and the reason being is later on I want to upgrade this to a car battery um, because of the fact that you're going to be continuously cranking it if you have an engine that's got overhead valve problems or things like that. So the way I did this was so that later on I could upgrade it to something out of like a truck or something with a long-term cranking capability. Solenoid is sitting right over there. And like I said before, if you check out my videos, you can see how to wire up a uh, mud mower with my Craftsman video. And you can check how to test solenoids. And then the kill switch that's up there comes down on this wire here, this black lead, and that comes to this. And that's an alligator clip on the end, and this is the kill wire. So all you gotta do is just clip it in there. And if you have the connector still here, then all you do is just put a nail into the connector and then clip the alligator lead onto the nail. You might want to put just a quick bit of black tape over it so that it doesn't ground out on stuff. And here's the lead here for a starter. I've got that on an extended piece that I actually took out of an, the MTD itself and connected that onto the solenoid so I've got plenty of extension. And the reason for that is because I also, once I get this battery upgraded, I want to be able to have a set of black 
um, cable coming off there and be able to crimp it on so that this will become a mobile boost station when necessary. So when this isn't in use as an engine stand, I'm going to have a plate that goes across here uh, with some edges or something and then that way this can become a mobile work stand and be able to jump and all kinds of other things when necessary. So that was the idea for that. Whoa, stop. I need to stop this video right here because I just realized that I forgot to include something because I do it out of habit and others probably don't and it's a bad idea to do but I do it out of habit. So what is it? Right now there's a switch missing on this testing stand. What it is, is right here there should be another switch. That switch should have a positive 5 volts going to it. That switch should also have a length of wire. From that length of wire, it should come down and it should go to right here on this solenoid. On the solenoid, it needs voltage to drop the pin to be able to run the cart. There, you can continue watching the rest of the video. Why don't I need it? I always take these out and I cut the top off. Naughty, naughty. And that's basically about it. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that you're able to make your own engine stand and testing area just like I did. Um, if you're new to this channel, I do a lot of off-roading with my mud mowers. I do a bunch of different innovative builds. And I also do lawn tractor repair how-tos on a regular basis. So feel free to subscribe, give comments, advice, and what you would do differently if you were in my shoes. Have a good day, guys.